good folks this is acid root so i'm going to review the don toliver debut album heaven or hell basically i've reviewed a number of don toliver projects if you caught some of my videos this past fall i reviewed his donnie womack mixtape which debuted back in 2018 and then a little while before that i reviewed the the uh, jack boys project that travis scott dropped back in late 2019 so that's kind of the stuff that don toliver has been on uh, he put out another album called Life of a Dawn recently, and this is that was the second album to this project. And so, yeah, Don Tolliver, if you don't know too much about him, he's kind of like in the company piece to like Travis Scott. I mean, he is a separate artist and has quite a bit of success on his own, but how he started off was he did a guest feature for Travis Scott's Astro World and then quickly connected with Travis Scott and signed with his label appeared on Jack Boys, appeared on Astro World, and wound up, and then quickly after Jack Boys came out, this project came out. So that's kind of the thing. Uh, really, Don Tolliver crested throughout 2019 trying to manifest this project. I mean, this was one of the last bits before the COVID pandemic happened. And um, this has a lot of good vibes to it. I mean, Don Tolliver has a lot of good vibes to it. I mean, Don Tolliver, he's pretty, he has a nice penchant for a nice hook, and he's pretty, I mean, he's basically like Travis Scott in kind of an R&B rapper kind of situation, kind of sing-songy, but it, it does have like a light sense of trap. He's kind of like if Nate Dogg were to do like t late 2010s trap music, I'd say Don Tolliver might be up your alley. He's got a little bit of that a little bit of Quavo thrown in, that type stuff. Travis Scott, of course, because they're label mates. But I just would have to say amongst that, it's kind of interesting just because Don Tolliver, to me, feels more of like a pseudo R&B singer more so than a rapper. And that's kind of the context. But like, I, I don't remember. I, I downloaded enough of his songs off his Donnie Womack mixtape, but it kind of got lost in the shuffle because a lot of things were going on as I reviewed that. And I kind of forgot so I'm gonna I would basically have to watch that review and remember the the project that I gelled with back in those days. But I would have to say at least some of these have enough personality to kind of say that Don Tolliver can stand on his own as far as doing an album. He's not just like I said, and even though I said he's an accompany piece to Travis Scott, he can actually sell units. So that's good to see. So I'll go ahead and talk about the singles. So the first single was No Idea. And this got like over 570 million hits on Spotify, so it's a fairly, it's a pretty successful song, I would definitely say. To to me, the feel of it was kind of in like a light R&B sense, kind of like a real. It kind of came off as like a backyard setting, but then kind of not also, where not every shindig is, of course, outside at some summer nights. It also felt like it could be played in the winter. And kind of has like a nice pitch towards it in terms of just any real get together where you've got something going on. I mean, a lot of these songs kind of come off as that. I mean, really, I would have to say about this project that the personality behind it, Don Tolliver is pretty concentrated on having a good time. But we'll kind of get to that. So it's a great introductory single. The hook is brilliant. And I mean, really, every single chorus that Don Tolliver drops on these four singles is outstanding. I really, originally, I was going to say that I felt like his vocals were better, his melodies were better on Donnie Womack, but at least on the choruses of the singles, he does great. I mean, these are catchy, they're earworms. Even though they're not going to break like mainstream makeshift blue collar rap type or blue collar music, I do feel like he's getting close to kind of becoming like. A, fr a frontal figure in like mainstream rap kind of like Drake and Travis Scott have but he's close he's not quite there he doesn't quite have the breakthrough single on this project but he's getting there he's at least the sidekick of someone like Travis Scott or like a you know Drake or someone like that I'm trying to Jay-Z somebody like that in like cases but so um second single was what was it can't feel my legs this one has a bounce to it this one felt more kind of r&b related and kind of something like dj mustard would do something like that i definitely like the way that that one went 
The problem that I'm having, I mean, I'm not going to be super descriptive in these just because there's a number of things I have to remember. I have to remember the chorus, if that's catchy, the beat, if that's good, the verses, if those are melodic and like, like the production, that type, I think I said production, but there's just a number of things when it's kind of an R&B singer that you have to remember. The catchiness of the verses, the catchiness of the hook, the production, and uh, stuff like that, just in terms of everything else, just the overall flair that the project has and stuff. So there's just a number of things, but I did feel like Can't Feel My Legs had enough catchiness towards it. I did like the production on there, and like I said, the chorus was outstanding. So third single was... Um, had enough and this is also to be found on the jack boys project so really i almost was going to say that it shouldn't have been on here but i do feel like it kind of was don toliver's song so he deserved to claim it for himself and uh, the hook is i mean you'll notice the hook pretty quickly it's got a nice kind of ring to it uh, I mean, this is kind of the example of why I feel like Don Tolliver, while good, it's this, his voice is just too, it's not nails on a chalkboard, but it's very distinct, kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like Freeway, the rapper Freeway, who kind of has like a scratchy type voice. His voice is just different than most rappers. It just has like a very high pitch to it. I don't know, it, it, it kind of, it's it's sketchy because I question what it would take for him to wind up on a number one, number two, number three hit single, something like that, just because, I mean, really, he's a mainstay in trap, he's one of the, he's one of the frontal faces of trap music, but I kind of feel like, for some reason, it feels difficult, like, somehow, I, it would seem like Justin Bieber or Travis Scott or, um, you know, like Drake and Future even have more crossover potential. And I'm not trying to be like crude or anything like that. I'm just trying to question as to why that kind of is. I just, I don't know. I mean, it just feels like he's kind of like, you know, top 35, top 50, you know, between places 35 and 50 on the billboard more so than like top 15, top 25 or something. But yeah, so that that's had enough. It's catchy. And then After Party was really good also. I mean, I, I like the chorus on here. It's kind of uh, ridiculous in a sense. It's just kind of like, like um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it's, it's kind of exaggerated, but I do like the chorus on here, and I do like the verses. I feel like the melodies are kind of well put together and such. I mean, these songs work. It's just the fact that, you know, it's just like I said, the concept of, going trying to make trap commercial i've talked with jack with gold kick about this before as far as trying to make trap music kind of commercial there's several attempts i've seen in trying to do it but for some strange reason it always kind of winds up somehow being in the background or at least secondary type songs because trap just can never quite bridge the gap i mean drake has managed to do it every now and then and future every now and then but it's just very off-putting the sheer amount of people who have the artillery to kind of make trap kind of become mainstream but for what it is i mean if you're if you're like fuck it i don't even care about mainstream i like rap it's like i mean this is good stuff i mean it's it's good trap r and B. I i mean there's not like i've said before don toliver is great trap r and B, and he's one of the few doing that i mean travis scott kind of does it quavo kind of does it when he's solo but um it, it is great trap r and B. he's kind of like a trap uh, a trap version of Akon or T-Pain or Nate Dogg or something like that. So that's what it is. But yeah, this is a very relatively scant project. There's only 12 songs, but I really felt like uh, the main thing about it was is there was not enough album cuts. I definitely felt like there needed to be way more album cuts in terms of this. The singles is enough to, to warrant like the purchase, but I still kind of feel like just a number of moments, there's terms of just ugly production, not good melodies, uh, questionable, like, questionable choruses, just the kind of stuff that is just, it doesn't really mesh together well. I mean, I feel like on a song like No Idea or After Party, you would think being able to do that way more often. Like, a, a good example of a good album cut on here is Wasted. The chorus really hits, like, immediately. I felt like that one's catchy enough. And then Spaceship had a clever vibe. I mean, it pertains to his whip, but just the concept of going out and kind of cruising through the night and that type stuff, enjoying those sorts of... It's a good, perfect weekend number, but some of these were just kind of crass. I mean, I don't know. I, I felt like no photos, candy, 
you know, cardigan. They just didn't have like enough kind of pungentness to them. There's, there's some there. There just happened to be something that kind of mismatched that was not quite synchronized enough to really go with it compared to the singles and like the better album cuts. Like Euphoria kind of felt pointless just because that was kind of a slower song and it, the production really didn't fit for like what they were trying to do. I think they were trying to do like some real druggy kind of melancholy future type number, but I didn't really see that being pulled off that well. And like Cardigan's production was pretty similar to like Can't Feel My Legs. It was just like a worse version of that. And um, yeah, there's just certain spots on here where it's, it, I just feel like Don Tolliver as of this point, at least on his first album, was kind of patchy. That's kind of the concept where it needed more flesh to be filled out, where he can do the singles and get like serviceable trap R&B, but the concept as far as having the personality to fill out some of these and have more to talk about than just money and going out, this is not in cars, there's not an overabundance of kind of stuff to kind of say that the melodies kind of suit it. And so, I mean, Don Tolliver is capable of singing well, but it feels kind of like in some cases this was on autopilot and it didn't translate it. it he needed more inspiration to kind of make some of this kind of have like a better vessel for that sort of stuff it it's odd you know it's odd because you look at certain songs and the catchiness of them i feel like you know he he simply needed probably a better batch of melodies i would have to say like the examples that i saw on wasted and spaceship and can't feel my legs and um like uh there's another one wasted can't feel my legs spaceship no idea i mean some of those really kind of had like accurate kind of vibes about them i don't know i mean that's really kind of the concept about it is this is kind of mainstream so it need it had to kind of have like the thumping production something for your whip you're not really trying to you know have like food for thought when you're cruising at like 50 miles per hour on like the freeway or something something like that and you're going out for the night it's not about like food for thought type stuff. It's just kind of the concept that the substance, at least in terms of the dexterity, was kind of lacking. I really felt like, you know, the melodies, I don't know. I mean, there's just a number of things. I, I feel like I could get real in depth with the complaints, but simply to me, the main portion of it is the, the synchronization of the melodies. And then when the melodies are good, having production that kind of works along with it. And that's kind of the stuff because when he does it on the singles, but a lot of these feel like this, pure playlist filler that you're not going to really pay attention to because you're more concentrated on the stuff that's going on more so than the music that's what it is is this kind of background music trap oriented wise that's kind of the thing so i'm going to give this album a five out of ten me liking six out of twelve single or six out of twelve songs i'll list them for you so after party can't feel my legs had enough wasted spaceship and no idea that's the basic concept i've described enough of the reasons as to why i like those basically if you're just here for the singles you'll be in pretty good euphoria to quote this album it's got some good stuff on here but um it's just kind of short-lived it just doesn't it, it's not an all night and tomorrow kind of album it just feels like there's moments kind of patchy kind of momentary and kind of ephemeral in a lot of ways. I just feel like it's short-lived in that context. And I think for the most part, the album's kind of counting on that you've got stuff going on more so than paying nitpicking details to this being a classic album. That's just kind of the context about it. But the social score, I will give a seven, just because four singles on your first album and to have that kind of hit potential and getting like 400 and 500 million plays on Spotify is extremely good. Plus pairing up with Travis Scott and having like being in a fairly, you know, a pretty popular genre at the time and still even 2022 is popular. So that's got some good stuff there. But in terms of the future, I mean, Don Tolliver just dropped an album back in October. So he did put something out recently and he's been working on something. He did a song with Justin Bieber. So I'm not sure what's going to happen next. But it's at least interesting, and it's decent for what it is, but it's just mainly patchy.